Module 3, Business Decisions Error in Reasoning Error in reasoning refers to a mistake made in logical thinking or argumentation, and it occurs when there is a flaw in the reasoning structure or a lack of evidence to support a claim. Some common types of errors in reasoning include Logical fallacies, these are mistakes in reasoning that can be intentional or unintentional, and they often occur when a person tries to persuade others to accept their arguments. For example, an ad hominem fallacy is where an argument is attacked based on the person making it, rather than being attacked based on its substance. Confirmation bias occurs when a person only considers evidence supporting their pre-existing beliefs and ignores evidence contradicting them. Overgeneralization occurs when a person draws a conclusion based on limited evidence or experience, without considering other factors or contexts that could affect the conclusion. The false cause is when a person assumes that because two things happen together, one must have caused the other. Hasty generalization occurs when a person draws a conclusion based on limited evidence or experience, without considering other factors or contexts that could affect the conclusion. Appeal to authority occurs when a person relies too heavily on the opinions or beliefs of an authority figure, without questioning the evidence or reasoning behind those opinions. It is essential to be aware of these errors in reasoning to avoid them and develop stronger arguments and conclusions. Opportunity costs. Opportunity cost refers to the value of the best alternative foregone when making a business decision. It is the cost of giving up one opportunity to pursue another opportunity. In other words, it is the cost of the trade-off between two mutually exclusive options. For instance, if you have $100 and decide to spend it on a concert ticket, your opportunity cost is the value of the subsequent best alternative use of that $100, such as spending it on a night out with friends or investing it in stocks. Opportunity costs can be explicit, such as the money you would have earned if you had invested the $100 instead of buying the concert ticket, or implicit, such as the time and effort you could have put into studying or working instead of attending the concert. Understanding opportunity cost is essential in decision-making because it helps individuals and businesses make informed choices by considering the value of the options available and choosing the one with the highest net benefit. For example, assume a food wholesaler is offered $15.60 per two-layer carton for 5,000 cartons of peaches. The wholesaler can buy peaches from their growers at $13.20 per carton. Shipping costs $2.40 for the first 1,000 cartons and $1.90 for every carton over that. This opportunity increases the value of the wholesale food retailer because the costs are less than the benefits. To determine whether taking this opportunity will increase the value of the wholesaler, we need to calculate the costs and benefits. The wholesaler can buy peaches from their growers for $13.20 per carton, and with a selling price of $15.60 per carton, the wholesaler will make a profit of $2.40 per carton. But note that shipping costs must also be considered. The total revenue from selling 5,000 cartons would be $78,000, which is 5,000 times $15.60 while the cost of buying the peaches from the growers would be $66,000, i.e., 5,000 times $13.20. The total cost of shipping would be, for the first 1,000 cartons, $2.40 times 1,000 equals $2,400 for the remaining 4,000 cartons, the cost is $1.90 times 4,000 equals $7,600. So, the total shipping cost is $2,400 plus $7,600, or $10,000. Therefore, the wholesaler's total profit would be Total revenue, $78,000 Total cost of goods sold, $66,000 Total shipping costs, $10,000 So, the total profit is $78,000 minus $66,000 minus $10,000 which is $2,000 total profit. Total benefit. Total benefit refers to the overall gain or satisfaction an individual or entity receives from consuming or producing a certain quantity of a good or service. It is the sum of all the benefits that result from a particular decision or action. Total benefit can be measured in various ways, depending on the nature of the decision or action. 
For example, in consumer behavior, the total benefit is often measured in terms of an individual's utility or satisfaction from consuming a good or service. The total benefit may be measured in profits, revenue, or market share. To calculate the total benefit, it is necessary to consider all the factors contributing to the overall gain or satisfaction. These may include direct benefits, such as the pleasure or utility that comes from consuming goods, and indirect benefits, such as the social status or sense of community associated with certain types of consumption. Sometimes, it may be challenging to quantify or measure all the benefits resulting from a particular decision or action. However, it is vital to consider the total benefit when making decisions to ensure that the decision or action is in the best interest of the individual or entity involved. For example, assume a company intends to install new management software for its warehouse. The software will cost $47,000 and an additional $148,000 to install and implement. It is anticipated that it will save the company $44,000 through staff reductions and $69,000 in general inventory costs in the first year after installation. The total benefit to the company in the first year is $113,000. The benefit is equal to the anticipated reduction in staff, $44,000, and the anticipated reduction in inventory, $69,000. $44,000 plus $69,000 equals a total benefit of $113,000. Net Benefit The net benefit measures the overall gain or advantage of a particular action or decision. It is calculated by subtracting the costs or disadvantages of the action from its benefits or advantages. For example, consider purchasing a new car. In that case, the benefits include increased safety, reliability, and convenience, while the costs include the initial purchase price, maintenance costs, and insurance premiums. To determine the net benefit of purchasing the car, you subtract the costs from the benefits. If the benefits exceed the costs, then the net benefit is positive, and the decision to purchase the car is likely good. If the costs exceed the benefits, the net benefit is negative, and the decision to purchase the car might not be good. The net benefit is a way of measuring the overall value of a decision by comparing the benefits to the costs. It is an essential concept in economics and decision-making, as it helps individuals and organizations evaluate the potential outcomes of different actions or choices. Assume you have a used CD store. You can purchase 230 compact discs for $356.50 at an estate sale and sell the CDs for an average of $3.05 each. The net benefit of buying the CDs at the estate sale and selling them in your store is $345. To calculate the net benefit of buying the CDs at the estate sale and selling them in your store, we need to determine the total revenue from selling them and subtract the cost of purchasing them. The cost of purchasing the CDs is given as $356.50 for 230 CDs, which works out to be $356.50 divided by 230 equals $1.55, which is the cost per CD. The revenue from selling each CD is expected to be $3.05, so the total revenue from selling all 230 CDs is 230 CDs times $3.05 per CD, which equals $701.50 total. The net benefit is then calculated by subtracting the cost from the revenue. Net benefit equals total revenue minus cost. Or, in our case, net benefit equals $701.50 minus $356.50, which is $345.